Whose birthday, birthday is it? Birthday. Who? Can we sing a song? Yeah. yeah. You got to do the clapping. Ready? Ready? <laughs> Ready? 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 No, you guys got it all wrong. Come on. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. So everybody's going to clap like this. Got to get me going. I'll sing for it. All right. This is your birthday song, and it's not very long. That's it. <laughs> That's better than the other one. All right. Good. And that was on recording, too. How wonderful is that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just copy. We'll just edit that part out. All right. The worst thing in the world I can do is start the day off with singing and then a drawing. <laughs> As many things I do, ex uh, I don't want to say well, <clears throat> acceptable, <clears throat> singing and drawing are neither of them. <laughs> So we're going to draw a vowel. We're going to try. Maybe if I go slow. You say your drawings are so bad, but it, it, it gets the point through. Yeah. We understand yeah. it. You kind of say, you say you got a little brown stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's acceptable. Your fives can use some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to draw both sides of this valve. This is going to be a valve. Oops. And then it goes way up high. Is it? And then. Well, I ran out of room, so it would have been okay. And then I ran out of room. And then it repeats on the other side. <clears throat> All right. Hang on. Let's get rid of that. Let's talk about that yesterday anyway. All right, now we can go back up. Oops. There we go. And then, it, then it repeats going down. You know, actually, when I was, before I was tenured, one of the comments they would make about, you have to be evaluated all the time, and one of the comments that, that I think it was Phil said, he goes, you know what's great about your teaching is you draw these really awful drawings. <laughs> and he said, and anybody can follow them. We had one teacher who just, it was beautiful artist, and he would draw these pictures, students were like, I can't do that. Yeah, so. Was it something I said? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> All right, I won't worry about it. Okay, so we're going to talk about. On, on his what? All right. Well, I'm going to talk about this if that's all right. <laughs> okay, valves. Used open and closed part. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, the parts of a valve. Whoa, there you go. B, parts of valve, a valve, uh, one, you got the groove, got the groove, groove is used for a keeper, used for the keeper, so I'm going to say right there, this is right there, that's one groove. But also, I drew another one right here, so that'd be 1A, and, and I do that just to give Lawson a freak him out there. 1A, so 1A, because I'm just adding this on the fly. 1A will often have a snap ring. Snap ring. And you're going to find that on old timey radials. Like, I just happened to bring this one in. So this one's kind of cool because if you actually look at the stem, it, uh, it goes like this. And then down has a little, oops, has a little groove goes that way. And so that's, you have a snap ring goes right there, snap ring. And then the keeper actually kind of comes down and it has teeth that go in there like that. It's kind of cool. What an awesome drawing that was. All right. And, and I don't really know what the thought was with the keeper. I mean, they don't do it on modern engines. And it was kind of a pain in the butt because you put the engine together and you put a snap ring, which is kind of nice because it didn't let them fall out, but you have to always remember to get the snap ring out. I guess it was in case the keeper fell off, then the snap ring would keep it from going into the engine. But then I guess somebody had the idea of, hey, why don't we just make uh, keepers that don't come out? And I guess that was the one that won. Uh, all right, so my drawing's over there, but I'm going to be doing stuff right here. We have the stem. 
stem. That's this whole thing here. That'd be two. That'd be the stem. Then I have an entire page of stuff written right here, and I'm not going to write any of this. Well, mostly. I'm not going to write stuff. So I've got stem. Well, the stem, um, usually solid. I don't know if usually is the right word. Sometimes they're solid. Solid. Um, but, but, um, the exhaust may be sodium filled. Sodium filled. These exhaust valves are really hot. <coughs> and so I'll tell you about sodium right here. Sodium filled exhaust valves um, have a hollow head and stem filled with about 60% sodium. Sodium has an extremely low melting point, about 100 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of 880 degrees Celsius. In a hard running engine, the valves are hot enough that the sodium in the head of the valve vaporizes, travels up to the cooler stem where it condenses back to a liquid again, kind of like a little rainforest within the valve. Uh, the phase transition from liquid to gas absorbs a lot of heat and the condensation dumps the heat in the stem where the larger metal to metal contact between the valve stem and the guide transfers the heat to the cooling system. Without this heat pipe effect, vastly more heat would be, have to be transferred through the valve seat. Too much heat through the valve seat, you get burned valve. Woo! I don't know, maybe now's a good time to talk about all that. So valves run very, very hot, especially the, well, the exhaust valve. The intake, not so much, because the intake has cool air and fuel, or at least cool air coming across. If it's a fuel-injected engine, the fuel is injected right, well, still before the valve. So air comes in, mixes in. <coughs> this chamber right here, if it was a fuel-injected engine, it would just inject fuel right here. And so the fuel and air, which is cold, goes across the intake valve and it runs relatively cold. But in order to cool the exhaust valve, it only is going to get cooled down here on the head when it's, oops, I didn't realize I got to keep it up this far, when it's touching the seat. So it's got that little area right there. And then it's also got where it touches the guide, you know, that area right there. So those are the only spots where it can really transfer heat. And so it's really important, and of course it's going to be very hot down in the head is where it's the hottest. So you've got to transfer that heat up and into the valve guide. Well, the problem we have with that is between the two, we've got green stuff, which is oil. oil. So you got the oil going in there. Well, the temperature that that's <coughs> running at, the oil cokes. And so it's hot enough that the oil will coke in there. So really the oil, the way I kind of see it, the oil, if it just if it's stagnant there, it's going to coke up, turn into that crystallized coke mess, and it's going to eventually seize the valve up. Because what it does is it builds up, some people just say it builds up the carbon in there, but we'll fine, we'll call it carbon. And so it takes up that space, and then what happens is the valve starts to stick. And we call it in aviation, they say the first sign of it is morning sickness. And that is when you go out and you start up your engine and it's like, whoa, that's running really rough. Wait a minute. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, I just had to warm up a little bit. And so you kind of get this thing going, well, my engine runs rough until it just has to warm up a little while. Well, what's happening is the valve is actually sticking open. And if it's sticking open and then the, that cylinder's not running well, and so that's why it's running rough. And then as the metal starts heating up, then the expansion comes in, then finally the valve is free and it starts to work. Oh, look, it's just, you know, it's just the way my engine is. Well, what you're about to do is stick a valve because what eventually happens is if the valve sticks open, you're somewhat okay. If you have a four cylinder and it sticks all the way open and stays there, you lost one cylinder and that's a quarter of your power plant and that's really bad. But if it happens to stick close, what happens is the rocker arm comes down on the, the uh, valve and tries to push it down, but it can't. So something has to give. And what usually gives is the weakest length, which is the push rod. And then you go in there and the push rod is all kind of bent. And, you kind of, you know, and then you really lost the cylinder in flight. So you got to keep this cool and you got to keep oil um, from coking up in there. And there's really not much you can do about it. Uh, light combing wants you to pull the valves out. I think it's every 500 hours, run a reamer through here. 
then remount all the carbon and then put the valve back in, which you're going to do that with Larry in his class, which is called the rope trick. But that is the problem. So what you as a mechanic can do and the things you watch for, number, there's nothing you can do about this, this guide up here and this oil coking other than the, uh, be aware that if there's the morning sickness, if uh, that, that's, you stop immediately and you go, whoa, we've got a problem. We've got to do this. And if it's one, I would say it's going to be all. And so then you remount the guides. Continental does not really have this, this problem, which is kind of weird. Um, what else can you do as a mechanic? You just got to be aware of that. If you're working on cylinders, you have to make sure that well, there's not much you can do. It's got to get your seating down here. Um, doing your inspections, it's always good to bore scope. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit to stick a camera down there and inspect the, the uh, face of the valve. So there. It's funny that, so light combing is actually the one with the sodium valves, continental, they're just solid. And light combing is the one that has more of the, uh, the sticking problem. Now, I don't know, cause and effect, maybe, maybe not. So, you know, I think I've mentioned once that I did work in a cylinder shop. I never had a cylinder come back under warranty and I never had one stick. So what is the difference? Well, I don't know, you know, I, I learned I'm not taking any credit for this. This is, this is something I learned from the people before me. Um, and, I, and I told you um, about Sacramento Sky Ranch and John Schwanner. And I told you about his book. Well, it was his equipment, John Schwanner. I think it his dad, you know, who started all this. And they're very smart guys. And then they taught their mechanics. And we bought all the equipment and brought the mechanic with, who then showed me this trick. So what we would do is, is on our light combings, our guides did not come pre-reamed guys the light coming guys don't come pre-reamed you have to line bore them so you would stick the guide in which you guys are all familiar with and then as, out there what we did is we just turn around and stick the valve in well you can buy pre-reamed guides most of the continentals came that way you just put the guide in and put the valve in it was done continentals weren't that way so you I mean, light coming so you put the light coming guide in then we'd have a rather large machine that we would line bore straight through line bore it right but we'd bore it under size and then we would use a hone, if you can believe it, a hone that was only a little less than half of an inch. And we would hone it to this micro finish. It was super polished in there. And we would, yeah, go to somewhere 4995. That was the dimension we, we stopped at. And man, it just worked so well. And I just feel like it was that, that extra hands on. It took a while to hone them. You know, you add an extra 15, 20 minutes per cylinder. But ah, they worked so well. I never had one come back stuck which anyway um okay i'll think of something there it's so the stem all right what else we have number three i lost it why is it green i don't know what am i gonna do uh the neck can't see it well the neck the neck as well right here three the neck this little area right there you have to be a little bit careful with some of the stuff you do like I showed you guys how to put the valves in and then we we tapped them a little bit that's called staking a valve and that's something you can do in the field so if you have bad uh, compression tests and it's coming out of one valve some people might suggest well let's just stake it you pull off the valve cover and then you just take a wood mallet and you know you got your cylinder sitting there like that and the rocker arms are here you take a wood mallet and just you know, put your pressure in there and hit it and pow. Uh, you gotta be careful because they say that you can actually start stretching the neck out. Also, just the operation of the valve, when it gets hot, it will neck, it will start erode. to stretch. Yeah, wow. erode and stretch. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? That's, that's not supposed like, to be like that. Yeah, that's not supposed to be that way. <laughs> I think I got that one from Larry. He always has good stuff. <clears throat> that's the neck. Um, what else I got? Neck. This yeah, is funny. The neck, we got number four. Well, if you got the neck, then you must have the head because you got the neck goes to the head. So there's the head. Four, four is the head. And then five, well, if you got the neck and the head, you must have to have a face. So five is the face. Yeah, face. Well, I'm going to move my. Well, that was a nice song there. I'll move that over here. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow we do the, you can do the cleanup song too. Yeah. All right. That's what's nice about having a student that still hasn't been that long since they're in preschool. 
<laughs> just to be clear, I meant that he's young, not that he's hanging out at a preschool. That would just be crude. <laughs> <clears throat> That'd be story. Yeah, I know. I promise you, his girlfriend's at least in eighth grade. <clears throat> All right, face makes contact with the valve seat, with the valve seat, valve seat. Uh, the intakes on modern engines, everybody tell me is, how many degrees? 30. All right, I heard everything. All right, so somebody was right, 30 degrees. Modern engines, the intake valve is 30 degrees. Um, all right, this is, this is, and I hate it when people qualify it, um, like this is my understanding. What I what I've heard, read, I don't know. This is what I come to believe, is that at one time they were all 45, and that's true. And 30 degrees gives you a better flow through the valve and seat area, so they went to 30 degrees to give you better flow. But they didn't on the 45 because there's more pressure with the exhaust valve hitting against that 45 seat. And you want that extra pressure because you're gonna get carbon buildup around the exhaust side. You gotta be able to smash through that. So that's why they kept 45 on the exhaust side and went to 30 on the intake side. So where we go, intake is 30 and I'll put allows for volumetric efficiency. Efficiency. And the exhaust is how many degrees? 45. 45 degrees. All right. Higher angle allows for more pressure to break up carbon. So, higher angle. Uh, allows for more pressure. break up carbon. All right, uh, six, we got the margin. The margin, I'm gonna go back up here. This is the margin right here. Six, put that right here. This little Right there, that's the margin. Margin's kind of an important thing, and it's actually something that you're expected to be able to measure when you're working on valves. And one of the ways that they show you in the book is to use a dial gauge, just like the dial gauge. Um, yeah, not a dial caliper, but you can use dial caliper too. Uh, but they actually use a, um, why am I losing my words? The, uh, the dial gauge, yeah. Um, depth gauge type thing, but not depth gauge, where like you used on your damn crankshafts for the outer round, that thing. Yeah, that's what I said. So, um, so you put the pin right there and you measure it, then you move it off. And it's like, how much did it fall? It's one of the ways they do it. I just used dial caliper and just checked right there. Because once that starts getting very small and it's no longer there, what happens in the engine as it's running, you don't have much material there. So this starts to glow kind of red. And when that glows red, you've created a glow plug. glow plug. And that is going to cause detonation, pre-ignition, pre-ignition, I should say, which will then lead to detonation. Yeah. I think when we were doing our cylinder overhaul, uh, you know, you had us pick some valves to, to clean up. You said mine was like sharp enough to shave with. Yeah. It had no, yeah, no, nothing. Gun, and I had to be careful on the lathe with it, man, because that. Oh, really? It was sharp? sharp. <laughs> the, the Scotch so. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to remember that. Um, if margin is a. I said home, I could bring it in next time. Or we can make one if margin <laughs> <laughs> is two. There, and it's not like my opinion on that. They actually give you dimensions in the book, so you'd have to check that. If margin is too thin, we'd call that a feather edge. Why, I don't know, because feathers aren't that sharp. Uh, Pre-ignition, which is ignition before you want it, and burn valves, you aren't burn valves. 
burn valves may result. And then we've got the tip, which you know is the very top. That tip is hardened, and that's why I drew that little line like this. Let me go back up. I just do that little dashed line like that. And if you look at uh, valves, let me see. Yeah, this one's a good example. This is, this is very discolored right there. That's a stellite tip. It's a hardened tip. And I showed you guys how to put it in the little machine and kind of do the face. They get really hot when you do that. And you've got to be careful. You're not supposed to take off very much of that because of the, the stellite on it. If you go through that stellite, do you just get a new valve? Well, you're supposed to measure them. Number one, you measure them. It tells you about the stretch, which is kind of weird. It's like, well, measure it. If it's too long, it's been stretched. But then I'm thinking, well, if it's too long and somebody ground it too much, then it's the right size. So I was never really reliant on that measurement thing. I would always look at the margin, number one. And then, honestly, what I did, I would just take a zero to one micrometer. I would measure it right up here at the top. And then I would just go down and see how much it was. And if it was more than like two thousandths of an inch war, I just threw it away. Otherwise, you're just, honestly, you're fighting warranty. And you're paying other people just because you saved them a couple bucks on a valve that was questionable. So the tips are hardened. Did I answer your question? I don't even know. What'd you ask? He's not listening. Okay, this is C, but it's way out here on the edge. So. What did I ask? What? I don't know. You asked some question. I don't know if I answered it. I gotta do this right, or you know, somebody will lose their oh. freaking mind over me. Um, if you run through the stellite. You could, but. Honestly, if you're careful and you're just taking off enough, you're not gonna you're not gonna go through the stellite the unless valve, you did it a bunch of times. Would, the valve would break before the, the, the it's gonna wear out before you ever get through it, yeah. unless you're just sitting there grinding away and you know smoking your cigarette. Different, <laughs> different types of valves. Well, if you ask me, you got your intake, you got your exhaust, but that's not what they're talking about. Uh, let's see, we're, there we go, there it is. All right, we got your flathead, semi-tulip, tulip, and mushroom. So, who do you suppose that one is? Semi-tulip. I think it's a tulip. It's pretty dang deep. Yeah. Um, what did we come up with the other day? Mushroom heads. We're exhaust, if you look at the radial, tulips tend to look more like intakes. Although this looks like an exhaust to me. That's a tulip. Maybe it's the other way around. Mushroom is more the intake. Yeah, if I think about it, I'd say mushrooms are intakes. Flats are usually intakes, although that's flat and it's an exhaust. I think. Yeah, it looks like an exhaust. I don't know. I'll just tell you, I don't know who decided what and when to use which one and how they're doing it. Uh, the mushroom is more is definitely not on flat engines. It's more of a radial engine thing. See a lot of mostly flats, and a little bit of semi tulip on modern engines. Mm -hmm. So. What's the uh, advantage of I don't know. I don't even know. But if I did, I'd write it down. Then I'd quite I'd make it a test question. <laughs> Flathead, semi tulip. The tulip and the mushroom. I'm going to go back to that. Don't freak out. Yep. All right, good. Yeah, my opinion. Hey, okay, tell me when you got all that written up. I'm going to clean up my paper here. Am I good? It's going to go away. Bye -bye. Oh. Oh, what?
All right, so that Michael, last one was C. This one's D. Okay. Very good. Good. Okay. I don't want. He's my favorite guy. I don't want to lose him, man. Well, you told me if I didn't say, he's gonna beat me up. So. <laughs> exhaust valves. Let's talk specifically about the exhaust valve which is really just circling around to what I've already talked about. We'll make some notes about it, make it official. Runs very hot. Runs very hot. Uh, let's talk about the head temperature. The head temperature. Head of what? No, head of the valve. By the way, what is this called? Cylinder. Yeah, I heard somebody in second year calling it the cylinder head. No, they call this the cylinder head. The whole thing? Yes. This is not a cylinder head. This is a cylinder head. This is a cylinder. <laughs> this is a cylinder assembly because it has valves in it. If I take the valves out, but I have the guides in, it's called a stud assembly. What? Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. Why would I lie about that? All the things I lie about, that's not one of them. <laughs> All right, the so head temp. All right, the solid exhaust valve. Solid exhaust valve uh, is up to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. The sodium exhaust valve is closer to to 1,000. So the sodium works. Let's talk about the stem temp. Stem temperature. The solid solid um, is 1,100 um, at the guide at the guide. The sodium is about a little bit cooler. Is 1,000, so 100 degrees cooler at the guide. That's the at, at sign. And I'll have a little, I'm waiting, yeah. How come the, the sodium exhaust is able to control the head temp minus 400 degrees, the stem is only 100 degrees. Well, as I was, science, follow the science, man. <laughs> we talked about the little rain, rain force that's inside of it. So, but now it makes it, let me reread it. Just, uh, valves, just the sodium in the head of the, the, the sodium uh, in the head of the valve vaporizes and travels up to the cooler stem where it condenses back to liquid again. This phase transition from liquid to gas absorbs a lot of heat. So it's absorbing heat. Follow the science. Yeah. And where was I going with this? Here, I was going here. All right, there's a little chart. This is a solid stem. This is the sodium cooled stem. So right here in the middle is what that's saying. In the middle, that's the hottest for a solid. It's a little over 1,400 degrees, but yeah, look at that. It's all the way down to about 1,000 here. As it gets out towards the edge, they both kind of converge because it's just metal out there, so it would make sense that they're just the same, just metal, metal. And they're running about 1,200 degrees out here. Um, so light cherry red, cherry, that's running cherry red. Dark red, very dark red. And then here's the valve, uh, the stem temperature. So down in this area, we're at what, 800 degrees? Uh, we're at best here, we're at about 980 or so, 980. So you can see that it's a lot hotter right in this area, but this is where it's running in the guide. It doesn't run in the guide in this area, so that's why it makes sense to me that it's so hot there. There's no transfer of heat out to the cylinder. So, ah, I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> In that area, in that it area. doesn't not touch in the guide. Yeah. It's, you know, guides up here, yeah. not right here. 
So. All right, exhaust valve. I have this point here, probably in a bad spot, but we're just going to go with it because, all right, point number three, green. I'm going to write it different. Green means stop. Green means stop. A green valve is a burnt, is a burnt valve. No. Um, burnt. I may have this written down somewhere else. I don't know. Burnt pizza is good. It's bizarro world, isn't it? Green means stop and burnt pizza is good. Well, it's one thing to say you got to do a boroscope. It's a whole other thing to evaluate what the hell you're looking at. So you're going to look down inside a cylinder. And by the way, the way you do a boroscope, right? You got get a nice workout lifting this up. It's a nice small cylinder. You have a camera that goes in this way and looks over there. Well, that doesn't do any good. You got to get one that articulates and comes back around. So you go in and now you're looking at the valves. That's how you do the boroscope. And you look down there at those valves and you got to make, you have to make a determination on what you're looking at. So green. so green means stop. Burnt pizzas are okay. So if we look over here, you can see, look at that green staining. Okay, which one's the exhaust valve? The smaller one. Smaller one? What kind of valve is that? Too late. Semi. Semi. It's not very deep. So I told you you can see that on modern engines. All right, so we've we got a burnt valve there. What is the remedy for that? A new valve. The new valve is correct. All, the, all you have to do is read when I ask you the question. This is, uh, how does this one look? No. It looks, oh, all right, you guys are awesome. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I don't really see the green in, in this in this one. First indicate. Well, okay. What you are seeing in these these upper pictures? Let me see. All right. Circular pattern is slightly uneven, non-symmetrical. I'm just going to read it because it really makes sense with the writing. See right here. I'm seeing a discolor right there. I don't like that. It's it's uneven. I want a very even looking. Oh, that's beautiful right there. You know, just so even. Even now, it's not right here, but I'm not going to worry about that too much because it is an intake valve and it's already running a lot cooler. So, what's the big deal? I care about both, but I'm really going to see this discoloration. The discoloration will show up mostly on the exhaust. Yeah, if these are running cool. I mean, why are they going to turn green anyway? There's just not that not that big a deal. So yeah, you can see the green, green, progression, and finally a crack. Uh, Larry's got some nice stuff. If you look around. Um, even on top of our shelves, you'll see a head, uh, uh, the head of a valve stuck in the head of a piston. I think that was his engine. He flew it when it did that. Yeah, so, and burnt pizzas. Okay, don't be alarmed by the bright color or deposits around the edges. The symmetrical pattern shows this valve is just fine. Symmetrical circular pattern shows a healthy valve. Red and orange deposits are harmless. The thick lead deposits from an overly rich mixture give this healthy valve an appearance of an overcooked pizza. Okay, what do you do if you're just really good at cooking pizza and never don't know? <laughs> what? I don't have chemicals. Talking about burnt now, that came from somebody. I didn't make that slide. All right, but I'm glad I put this one in here. I think this came out of the Sky Ranch Engineering Manual. Uh, this is obviously a light combing because they're representing sodium in there. But see what I mean? How there's no heat transfer here. So this is going to be pretty hot right there. So the heat comes in and it's got to, got to go through the seat. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is a good picture here to remind me of something. So, I don't know, maybe I'll have seats later. There are two types of seats in aviation. There's the straight cut and the Allison cut. This is an Allison cut seat. And when we did the Continentals overhaul with you guys, we had the straight seats, right? They just went straight, but an Allison cut seat, as you can see, is a, has a step in it, here, 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 here. So that's the seat right there. And if you notice that they purposely left the spacing here, well, that's because it's that way. This right here is a tight fit, an interference fit, 
This is not. There's actually a gap right there. And what that does is it allows the expansion and contraction of the two different metals without cracking the cylinder right there. It felt it was very prone to cracking. So it's pinched down here and not up there. Um, what do you prefer? Huh? What do you prefer? These ones are regular or straight? Uh, I like the Allison. Okay. It didn't bother me, you know, when I you had never the... Had no, they work the same. I get them in and out the same. I cut the seats the same. I just use an Allison seat cutter. It's all the same. So, um, and we've talked about this so much. You know, the heat transfers you know, through the seat. It only does that when the valve is closed. So, got, you know, you want the valve closed to transfer that heat off to the seat. It's also going to transfer through the guide and then off to the fins. What? Nothing. Oh, sound like it was important. No, no we're saying talking about that, no that valve needs to be replaced with its own marking. <laughs> Good catch. All right, must be all I have to say about valves. Uh, okay, green means stop. When you're checking the, I assume when you're checking the green, you're waiting for the oh, cylinder to be cool. Oh, you do it while it's running. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, not necessarily. I don't want it to hurt my camera. Okay. But otherwise, no, I just, it doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't cool matter. is. I mean, you want it cool, yeah. but the process is I'm going to take my airplane. Well, I like to go up and, and fly, get, get nice and warm, and um, which is funny. My uh, my in-laws, I, I, my father-in-law, he's just, I, I love this guy. He's actually just a wonderful, wonderful guy, Vietnam vet. Man, we get along great, but he uh, he watches me carefully through, uh, what's that, uh, flight, flight? Uh, flight radar? Flight aware. Flight aware, yeah, flight aware. And so I had to do an oil change in my airplane, and I went over like the next day. I goes, what's going on? What happened to you? I'm like, what? No, I'm fine. Why? Why are you asking this? Well, I was watching. You flew for like two minutes. I saw you took off, and you did a pattern. You immediately landed. I'm like, no, I just was warming the oil up, and it was <laughs> bad weather. I didn't want to go too far. It's like, okay. So I'll warm the engine up, get it nice and warm, and then uh, bring it in the hangar and, and start the oil draining, and then pull the plugs, which are very hot at that point, and do a compression check while it's hot, and then... Then as soon as, by the time you're done with that, do some other stuff, it's kind of cool, then I'll get the boroscope out and get that done. Get it over and done with. Yeah, I was just thinking of any uh, inspection process before you want to get it hot. The differential check <coughs> and the oil drain, yeah. So oil cokes, we talked about this. Cokes at 575 degrees F or 300 degrees C. That's pretty far away from what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a valve stem that's a thousand degrees. So this is also a problem, another subject, but when you're talking about turbochargers, you know, turbochargers are running really hot and they have oil going through them. And so if you know somebody who's got a turbocharged airplane, if you're at the airport and you're watching turbocharged airplanes come in, and the guy likes his airplane or the guy likes the airplane, they don't just taxi in and shut down. You'll see them out there for a long time running their engine. And they do that. They just sit there and run it for a long time. They'll let the, everything cool way down before they'll shut it off. Because when you shut off the engine with a turbocharger and the oil that was flowing through it just stops right where it was. Now it just sits there and bakes. And so then it's going to coke up and you're going to lose the bearings and lose your turbocharger. So... Anyway, so the, the point here is we've got a thousand degrees going through the exhaust guide and we have oil that's going to coke at 575 degrees. What do you think the oil is going to do? Coke. Oil is going to coke up. Well, how do you solve that? One of the ways they tried solving it was with uh, synthetic oils that don't coke. But it just was a disaster and it did not work well at all. They had lawsuits and everything. So that's when we still have regular oil. We don't have, um, well, we have mixtures. We'll talk about that next class. Um, see, coke builds up, yeah, and so we talked about that, so the, the coke, the coke causes, causes stuck, stuck valves. What I really wrote is this is why some engines have valve sticking problems. Coke builds up and pushes valve to one side. This decreases clearance until no oil gets in and the valve seizes into the guide. Um, why is it like that? This 
six A B C parts of valve C D E. Oh, because we're talking about exhaust valves still. So one step out here, one step out. Because his uh, I was runs very hot. I'm learning, huh? Okay. May be sodium. Sodium filled. That's kind of a repeat. Sodium filled. Um, may have a stellite. Stellite. May have stellite. Stellite added to face and tip. And tip for hardening. Um, the exhaust valve um, usually has a larger stem than the intake. Let's say usually some of the small continentals are the same size. So it has a 45 degree face. And we said one it uh, that cuts carbon because it has more pressure, and two there's technically more surface <coughs> area. <clears throat> when you're refacing valve seats, lapping in your valves, and you're evaluating how wide it is, that's one of the things you have to balance in there is you want it wide enough that you're getting a decent contact area, but not so wide that you have, you don't have that extra pressure in there to cut the carbon. Uh, oh, they are designed to rotate. Designed to rotate. Well, how do they do? Well, let me see what I got here. Yeah, all right, so due to uneven heating, due to uneven, Heating. Um, if the valve did not rotate, if valve, I go up. Valve did not rotate. It would burn. It would heat. It would heat slash cool unevenly and burn up. And so how do we do that? To make it rotate, we use, um, I'll say rotating devices. So that would be rotating devices. A, that's what I'm doing at. Um, TCM uses roto coils. I didn't bring in a roto coil with me. Uh, a roto coil, it's just so you guys know how you have the on top of the spring, you have this the spring, the upper spring seat. Okay, a roto coil is an upper spring seat, but it's two pieces and they're allowed to rotate. And so, what happens is um, the way that keeper and the valve, uh, and the valve and the spring seat with your say your intake, it really doesn't allow it to twist that much. It kind of does, but not so much. So with a rotocoil, it really adds that. Continental uses rotocoils on both sides. With, the, with them two rotating on each other, and that's still in the measurement, is that a concern with that, with them rotating on each other and wearing down the material between them? I didn't quite understand that. So you said there's, there's going to be two plates that go on top of each other and they'll be spinning, right? The rotocoil? Um, a little bit, yeah. So like the contact space between them, yeah. like how the shaft and the bushings? Would that be a concern, that clearance between those two? No. Between the valve and the... You see, these are rotocoils right here. This is right side up, that's upside down. Yeah, I'm talking about between those two. So the clearances between those two together. Between right here? Yeah. So the no, no, they're... Together, there's no <laughs> worry about... Look at this. this is a small continental. They're far apart. Oh. They're no wider than this. Right. Yeah. You do have some clearance issues with the rocker arm. You had to watch. But they break. And here's a great picture of them breaking. 
So yeah, then they don't roto coil so much. They don't roto. And so you have to be very careful and they want you to check them every time you take the cylinder apart, make sure that they still roto. I'm sure it's in the uh, M0 manual now. All right, light combing is a little bit different. Um, light combing. So you already know, light combing uses a little rotator cap. It uses a rotator cap. Cap. And what that cap does, it actually unloads, it goes down and it pushes down on the valve keepers, pushes the keepers down a little bit and unloads the entire spring from the valve. And so it allows the valve to kind of move uninhibited. It's kind of a weird little thing. You don't realize what it's doing until you really start looking at it and realize there's a little space there and how the cap doesn't actually sit quite flush on top of the, the valve. It actually hits the keepers first. And so it pushes down on the keepers, unloads them, and then allows the valve to spin a little bit. And then unload the cap, that unloads, unloads the keepers. Uh, the bigger con bigger light combings, they'll, they use those on both sides. I don't even think I have this written down in here. Let me see. Yeah, I don't. Um, some of the bigger, bigger bore engines, they use seats that are actually Venturi seats. So we're, we're looking at seats. Let's see. Um, alt tab. Right there. Um, it's kind of a poor representation. How would I do that? The seats are actually kind of have a bulge in them like that. I'd have to make the seat bigger and come down into here to make that work. But OK, so it does. But then it has something like that on it. And uh, it's a Venturi seat. Creates a little Venturi action right there. I hate them. They're really hard to work with. I don't know what it is about them. All right, rotating devices. You guys don't want the lights off. <coughs> the what? You want the lights off? Yeah. Well, it's break time, so. I, two minutes, one minute. I can see the clock right there. It's 8.19. <laughs>